Hey, what's up you guys and welcome back to my channel. Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. Hey, what's up you guys and welcome back to my channel. Hey, 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 what's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. You're watching Lizard Guru. Hey, what's up you guys and welcome back to my channel. It's so great to have you guys. I also wanted to welcome all of my brand new subscribers and I wanted to welcome anyone who randomly came across this channel. It's great to have you guys. So for today's video, what I'm going to be going over is teaching you guys the 10 common care mistakes that owners make. And this is volume two. If you haven't seen the first one, then be sure to go up here and watch it. So let's get to it. The first most common care mistake is of course, husbandry and lighting. This is one of the first mistakes that owners make. So generally, owners make the mistake of buying red lights, which are harmful to your dragon. Any colored lights at all are harmful to your dragon. They use lighting at nighttime, which is improper. You shouldn't use any lighting at night because literally the lights in the UVB act as the sun and the sun is not there 24-7. So you don't need any lighting or heating at night unless the temperature gets below 65 degrees Fahrenheit. If that happens, then use something called a heat emitter. And if you have never seen my lighting video, go up here and watch it. It's typical for them to also not use UVB or have UVB that doesn't go towards the entire length of the tank, which is very proper because they need UVB in the entire length of the tank. They will also use loose substrates that are harmful to your dragon like sand, mulch, and all of that other type of stuff. Or they have humidity that is way too high. Your humidity should never go over 30%. Get it to close to 20% as possible, but it should never go over 30% because you can have chances of illness. It's also very common for these owners to have very dull tanks where there's nothing to climb on, nowhere to hide, roommate in, nowhere to bask. And it's also very common to have the mistake of the incorrect water your wattage should vary depending on the age of your dragon, the size, etc. You also need to be sure that your light is not too close or too far away from your basking area. The length of where you put it is very important. Number two is feeding. Feeding is also a thing that is very, very common to mess up for new time owners. Feeding anything that is not fresh or live is improper. You should not be feeding pellets, freeze dried, canned, frozen none of that. You shouldn't be feeding any of that. You also shouldn't be feeding mealworms because if you haven't seen my OP tribute video, go up here and watch it. It explains everything on why you should not feed mealworms. Also, feeding a staple of kale, spinach, or broccoli is very harmful to your dragon because these are all calcium binders. So, you should not have this as a staple. It's not needed to be fed. But if you must feed it, it is okay in small amounts because it actually is beneficial in some areas in very small amounts with other greens and with other things being fed with it. It should not be fed alone and it should not be fed every single day. Number three is supplementation. It's very common to either over supplement or under supplement. You can actually have issues from both over supplementation and under supplementation. So you need to be sure that you are giving the right amount of calcium because they need not that no matter what. And also adding things like probiotics, multivitamins, liquid calcium if you need to. If you know nothing about supplements, go up here and watch my supplements video and it will teach you a lot more about that. But it's very, very important to make sure that you have all of these supplements and not just doing one or the other because all of them have benefits and you can actually get illnesses from not using every single last one of them. You can also get illnesses from overdoing it on all of these supplements. So be sure that you have a supplement schedule, be sure that you have a feeding schedule and you follow it. Number four is a tricky one, especially with my channel. <laughs> and this is with cohabbing. Cohabbing is something that a lot of new owners try to do and it is just not something that 
anyone in my opinion should try and if you don't know what cohabitation is it is where you take two bearded, two or more bearded dragons and have them in one single enclosure inhabiting it at one time basically so it's where you have a bunch of dragons in a tank if you've been here for long enough the very beginning of my channel I had all of these videos and examples with both of my bearded dragons Belly and Nyx in the same tank the reason I did this is actually up in these videos it's two videos that explains the whole entire story explains the whole reason why I did it but it is a fact that bearded dragons are solitary animals and they should not cohabitate. You can have a lot of issues with them fighting, eating each other. If you have like a small dragon going in with an adult one, that small dragon is food to that adult one. It will kill it. So cohabbing is not recommended. It's not safe, especially if you are a new time owner. It only works out in very very rare occasions and a lot of people go back to the whole case of well in the pet store they have all of these babies in the same tank and that's simply because that is okay to have a bunch of babies in a tank at one time for short periods of time these babies that you're seeing in that tank they're getting sold like hotcakes okay so they're not in there for that long it might seem like it but they're really not so in that situation it's okay to have them in that tank for small periods of time but it's not okay Okay, to have bearded dragons live forever their whole length of their life together. In the occasions that it does work, it is done by experienced breeders and with dragons that have been cohabbed their whole entire life. Not taking two random dragons and putting them in a tank together, it just should not be done. And when it does work out, it's usually with tanks that have ample amount of space and they're also taking the dragons out to get, you know, breaks from each other so they're not in there 24-7. With my dragons, I actually have separated them. They're no longer in the same tank. And no, they never had any aggression issues, they were never mean to each other, they never had any issues like that whatsoever. But when Nyx and Belly went into cremation during this winter, I decided to just separate them and put them in separate tanks and when they woke up they were completely fine. They didn't have any issues. And they're actually thriving right now. They're doing perfectly fine, living in their separate tanks and there's no issues. Number five is bug care. For new time owners, it is very very common for them to not know that it's just as important to take care of the bugs as, that you're feeding your dragon as it is to care for your dragon. You want to know and keep track of what you're feeding your bugs. You want to be sure that you're gut loading them. You want to be sure that you're feeding them healthy greens, veggies, and giving them little water gel stuff to make sure that they're well hydrated and full of nutrients because you are what you eat. So these dragons, if their bugs are healthy, they will be healthy. So it's very, very important to make sure that you are not only giving your bugs a healthy diet, but that you are also buying these bugs from reputable bug breeders or sellers because you don't want to buy sickly bugs and then feed them to your dragon because it is inevitable for them to get sick. So you need to be sure that you're actually looking at your bugs when you get them. Make sure that they look healthy. You also want to be sure that you're dusting them like we talked about earlier. And you can even go as far as to breed them yourself and that's less chance of you having any issues with them having parasites and so forth because you can actually keep track of everything you feed them because you know where they came from, you know where they've been bred from, and you already know that they're healthy. Number six is not paying attention to your dragon. Your dragon cannot speak. They are not verbal. So that the way that they communicate is non-verbally through their signs, through color change, through um, different characteristics like eye sagging, them being lethargic, them not eating the same, not having the same activity. Maybe they're going under their huts more. Whatever it is, your dragon is trying to communicate with you 24 7 you have to know the signs you have to know how to read them because they could quite literally be showing you that they're dying and you're doing nothing about it if you don't know what their signs are and I don't mean to freak you out but this is a very very real thing and I want the best for you in your dragon so if you know nothing about the signs or their characteristics, go up here and watch my whole series on what your beardy is trying to tell you. It's a three-part series, and I go over just about everything there is to know about characteristics. Number seven kind of goes along with number six, and this is underplaying signs of illness or stress. So this is when you see your dragon having a change in behavior or a change in appearance, and you're just like, oh, well, they'll get over it, or mm, they'll be okay, or for stress stress you're like oh they're stressed but it'll be okay they'll calm down eventually it is something that you need to attack immediately you have no idea if they have like a very deadly parasite in them or a 
infection or something like that, you need to act immediately because dragons don't start showing signs of stuff until it is nearly too late. Okay, they can act like they are the happiest things in the world and then all of a sudden, poof, they're just sick like that. So you need to be sure that you act immediately when you see a difference. And with stress, you need to be sure that you aren't putting them in high stress situations because stress actually leads to illnesses. It shaves time off of their life. Same with humans, actually. So you need to be sure that they are in low stress situations and make sure that they are comfortable. It'll just give them happier, longer life. Number eight is having them near predators. I understand that when you have a dragon, you might have other pets, but it's it's really, really, really not recommended for you to have your tank anywhere where it can be reached by a cat or a dog or any other type of predator like that. Cats and dogs are predators to these types of creatures and they could act like this in a predatory response. Even if they're the sweetest creature in the world, they could just act and try to eat your dragon. It happens all the time. You would not believe the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of messages of, oh crap, what do I do? So you need to be very, very careful with this. Be very, very mindful and all I can do is warn you. Number nine is a very common one as well and one that even happens on my channel. And this is letting online experts diagnose your medical issues for your dragon. You should not be going to anyone that has a channel about reptiles or something or anything like that and asking them to diagnose your medical issues and this is simply because though we may know 90 percent of the illnesses out there for the creature that we are representing or teaching about or educating about we are not medically trained in that field at least i'm not and i will admit that i am not a vet most of the people out here are not vets. Unless they specifically say they're a vet, they're not a vet. And if you are having a medical emergency, you should go to a specialist immediately. You shouldn't wait for somebody like me to tell you to go to an expert. So if you have a life or death situation or something you are super concerned about having to do with their health, then go to an exotic animal vet. Go to a specialist where they can help them and see them in person. Because even if I was a vet, trying to diagnose them through pictures online is not very helpful because you need to be able to run tests, you need to be able to feel them, look under them, you know, check for movement. It's just not helpful to do that through a picture or a video. And then that brings us to our last and final one, number 10, and this is having them away from their heat source for too long. I know it's really, really cool to see all the videos of the dragons out and about and going out to all these cool places and stuff like that but they need about 10 to 14 hours of light every single day so bringing them to places like work school bringing them to concerts or stuff like that is just not the best idea unless it is going to a place that is super sunny like going to the beach or um, I don't know going to an event where it's outside and there's not a lot of people to stress them out type of thing then that's perfectly fine but as soon as your dragon gets to 70 degrees or below they need to go back inside their tank they shouldn't be out in temperatures below that for long periods of time. So this includes feeding during those times because if you're feeding your dragon when they're out and about it's just not safe because at that point unless they have optimum heat they're not going to be able to digest that and it's just sitting in there waiting to make them sick basically. So please be sure that you are paying attention to their temperature when they're out and about. Be sure that you bring a temp gun to check their temperature as you're going along and you should have a happy and healthy dragon. So for today, that is all I have for you guys. If you're still watching, be sure to like this video, share this video, subscribe if you haven't already, and also be sure to follow all of my social media accounts, my Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and I also have a Facebook group. And if you didn't know already, I have a second channel. The name is right here, Alex's Random Entertainment. This is where I do funny and cool animations, sometimes inappropriate animations, and other random types of entertainment. So be sure to go check those out, and as always from my family to yours. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful week. Mwah.